Hello and welcome back to some more info about Arm Straight Tycoon Tanks. Last week, Kickstarter started. The demo is now in Steam. You can actually play it right now. And I just want to talk about my first impressions from playing the demo a couple of hours on stream. So let's get into it. So I want to take a bit of an unscripted look at, uh, or review, I guess is more accurate, of, of my experience with the demo. In the background, you can see some footage that I've taken from the stream. And I'm impressed. I, I like what I see. Um, I think this is a game that has a lot of great potential. Uh, the demo is, is a bit short. You have uh, until October of 1914. Uh, you get designed about three different-ish uh, tanks. I think there are about four hulls you can do. Uh, so you kind of get to a, 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 a light scout tank that you can design, which is based on the Whippet. You have like the Mark 1, and I think you got a Mark 5 and a Mark 7, or a Mark 3 and a Mark 5. I can't remember the exact numbers, but, you know, they're the classic British tanks. And, yeah, you can sell them. I, I like what I see. Um, I, I did notice, however, somebody commented... A, uh, to me at, at a later stage is that I really need to take my time playing this game. I've been glancing over mechanics, I've been failing to see certain bits and just clicking through it just to get a feel for the game and I, because of that I might have missed certain things. Now, when I played the demo, demo, demo? Well, just switch into different accents. When I played the demo, I, um, I have to say um, that was the first iteration of the demo. There has been, I believe, two patches by now uh, that have uh, changed some of the balancing, added a couple of new quality of life things already. So it's kind of amazing to see that even for a demo, the developers are actively on development. Um, also, at the time of uh, speaking, the um, recording this, uh, the game already has been funded. The original funding goal was fairly low, and I think that was more to as a as a proof of concept for you know um, that there is enough. Uh, uh, you know, hype for a game like this. So yeah, it, it did get funded in 15 hours. Then the goal was only 8,000 euros. 8,600 6, euros, which is, is very little. Um, but they are, I believe they have a publisher called Micropost, so they probably have some funding coming in from there as well, because developing a game for $8,000... Uh, that's not a lot of that's not that's not a lot of money depending uh, where I'm from. Um, but they've got a whole lot of stretch goals you can check out uh, on the page, and I definitely think you should. But back to the game, um, I like what I see, and I'm hoping that it gets funded uh, more. That I get a couple of stretch goals that I really would like to see. Um, but the game itself. As I played it, I think it needs a little bit of work. I felt like I had to know things ahead of time. Uh, I did. Uh, reactive play seemed to be punished a bit, in my opinion. Um, when they were, when we were getting contracts for tanks, for example, um, one of the lowest numbers you could get was like eight or nine tanks. And building those tanks, when you get the contract, you already sort of had to know exactly how many tanks you need to produce or uh, what materials you need and that kind of stuff. Um, because the time frames that you could get for them were very, very little. So a lot of risk taking is involved either that uh, you need to just pre-build all of the tanks so you can deliver them in time. Or you kind of already need to know a lot of stuff. Uh, so you are kind of sure of the contract that, that, that you're gonna get and that you are getting the contract. Because one of the things that didn't, wasn't exactly explained to me, um, or I did, I, I might have read over it, so I'll, I'll be honest here, is that your tank being approved doesn't mean that that is a tank that's actually going to be delivered to the company. Um, it just means that your prototype is approved, and if you want to sell them the tank, there's another like bid work type of deal that they go through. So you say, like, I can deliver this many tanks for this, this amount of money in this amount of time, which makes sense. Um, but sometimes these numbers would not line up. Like, hey, you have 30 days to deliver us 21 tanks. Like, fuck me, I need to go bankrupt on, on buying goods, which takes me 20 days to even get here. And I need about 45 days to build these tanks. So I don't need to already ha have all those tanks. So there was a little bit of confusion for me there, and I probably should look into it a little bit more and get into more depth. But that felt a little bit weird. 
Uh, secondly, and this is just a minor gripe, what I found really odd is that after your tanks get delivered, these companies go into battle with tanks, right? Which makes sense. Now you get these battles on the on the map, and they look really cool because you got your design tank driving there and doing its thing, and you can get an overview at the end of what exactly happened uh, after the cinematic, which you know explains a little bit of stuff, which is a bit confusing. I think it could use a little bit of love to make that a little bit more clear what happened there. Um, but one of the minor grabs, I was like, okay, fine, you know, I fight uh, my seven tanks that I did manage to deliver instead of the 21 I promised, because well, I'm shit, <laughs> are fighting 30 German tanks. Like, okay, well, that's fine, you know, I fill my contract, so uh, they get less tanks. But why the fuck aren't we delivering more tanks? Why, why is this, this, is this the army? Because I know I'm not the army, right? I am not the guy that's in charge of everything, but why is it like, okay... Um, we're not going to develop any replacement parts. We're not going to build that. We're not going to deliver it to you. We're not going to deliver any replacement tanks because the contract is done. And I've just felt weird. I'm like, that, uh, I would love to see maybe instead of a... Okay, there's a single time delivery that you do with, before this date to think more in the lines of, okay, we are. you are now responsible of providing a set amount of tanks over a certain period of time, which is prolonged, right? So instead of just, if, okay, this is the deadline, that's when all the tanks need to be there. Like, okay, sure, but this is this is what we've delivered before that deadline, right? This is when the initial battles start to happen. This is when, when they get fielded, and this is where the point where you start getting your, your, your initial feedback. But maybe the contract should be a slightly more fluid. Like, okay, second contract, uh, or instead of just having these contract-based things, like a period over, over time. So... Um, after the initial period is delivered, okay, so like, uh, but maybe next month I can just uh, deliver another five tanks, which the army pays for, so I can buy more materials, start building more tanks, maybe optimize the building process a little bit more, streamline the 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 construction line so we can actually make it cheaper for me to produce these tanks, and maybe we can work out a couple of kinks that apparently have become forward in the battle. Like, the reliability turns out to be very shit. Like, okay, well, that kind of sucks, and in the terrible terrain where they're fighting right now, that is a problem. Okay, so let's fix some of those reliability issues by swapping a couple of components around, doing a little bit of research here, doing a little bit of research there, and bam, we're delivering a, a, a Mark II version of the same tank, right? And we'll deliver that to the front, see how that, how that works. And it's the, I would love to see something more akin to that direction and not what they have right now. Um, which makes sense, right? If you look at modern war in, 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 in its, all of its stages from World War uh, One actually to up to, to modern war, is that equipment hits the field and you kind of realize it's not working as you intended it to begin with. And um, a good example of that is what happened to the Sherman tanks. They they got the short, uh, ooh, I want to say 75 millimeter, but I don't think it's a, uh, it's a, it wasn't, a, it was, it was, a, was it a 50 something ish millimeter cannon? Turned out wasn't that effective um, at longer ranges, so it got upgunned to a uh, to a 76 or so 75 millimeter, um, and later on it got even a better version. It started, you know, development there, development here. Look at the intense amount of variants that got produced for the Panzer Mark III and the Panzer Mark IV. These were functional machines, but they had problems, and some some of those problems were upgrades. Um, in like the effectiveness of the vehicle, like different radios, side skirts, armor, up armoring the vehicles, all that kind of stuff. But other bits that it did was, especially with the Panzer IV, was figuring out methods to make it cheaper to produce the tank because Germany was running out of materials. This is the kind of stuff that I would like to see. I want to see, um, the, for me, the ability to to have a f more fluid process and not instead of just these set deadlines, these set points. Uh, I want to be able to to grab one of my older tanks and say, look, okay, I want to redesign specific uh, components for it. So you research a new component, which is pretty cool to do, right? You can say, look, okay, we want to redesign it. And instead of having riveted, uh, a decent type of rivets, I want different type of rivets. or so something along those lines, right? You just swap in and out a couple of components. You change the design a little bit around. And then you just grab the original tank and you pull out that old component and you stick it new in. You do a couple of trials to see if it actually fucking works. You know, you redesign some of the process and then you go back into the factory floor and you start producing that new tank. And over time, you would assume that you can maybe spend a little bit of time, research, money, effort in optimizing the production process, which makes it uh, take less time, less work hours, and that kind of stuff to produce a, a single tank, which makes it cheaper for you to produce the tank. And um, 
you know, makes you more profit per tank because you sell these for, for a fixed price, which is what one of the contract things that you need to do is add in a fixed price, which makes sense, right? Uh, you pay 7,000 gold. Uh, it's arbitrary money. You pay 7,000 monies for this tank. And right now, in the, in the, uh, at, at, at the start, it maybe even cost me six and a half thousand to produce these damn fucking things, right? They're, they're expensive to produce. But over time, you know, you get... Um, it is a guesstimation because you need to also buy your materials in and that kind of stuff. So it's not a fixed price for you either. But over time, you might be able to make it cheaper to 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 get all the production signs uh, done. And that's what I like to see. So I think I like to pre-process pretty well. I, I, I'd love to have a little bit more of a... a, a um, Having these, some of these processes be slightly more simultaneous because right now it's fairly fixed. Like, okay, you either research or you develop a part or you develop a tank. Maybe there is ways for us to do that in similar ways. Uh, currently, you have Jeff engineers and you've got workers. Maybe you have scientists, engineers, and workers. So you can always spend some time researching, developing new models, but you kind of have to choose between designing components and building tanks um, and building with, I mean, designing the tanks. And then you, uh, your workers can do other things. And that's one of the things that kind of bugged me as well is that your workers only work when there is work done on the tank. And I kind of get that. But what about, maybe there it could be something there where workers don't feel useless like 90% of the time, where you're in that design pre-developing process. What can we do to make those workers do something in the meantime as well? Because otherwise they just feel like a monetary drain. Or you need to start switching, you know, you need to fire everybody out of, out of, the, out of the company uh, until you need to build the tanks, then you need to hire them back in. And that's a very uncomfortable process, I, I, I'd assume, to just keep doing that and keep putting an eye on that and, and min-maxing that kind of stuff. Because so maybe you can, you know, produce parts, right? There are machine guns on those tanks. Maybe um, I can spend some of my 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 resources and some of my my manpower, my worker manpower, on, on building guns. Um, so yeah, and I, I think yeah. So so I would love to see that process a lot more flushed out and and a lot more feeling natural uh, with with the feedback I've just given. Um, I sound maybe a little bit critical. But I really like the game. I think it has a lot of potential. I did back the game, um, gave it uh, a good a good backing. I'm not gonna say how much to spend on it. It's 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 a more than significant amount, right? I got one of the early birds uh, uh, pledges, which is just gives me close alpha, beta access, a couple of packs, and all that kind of crap. Um, doesn't really matter. Because um, I, I have a lot of, uh, I've, I've been following these guys for ooh, almost two years now in their pre-development, almost two years I think. It's it's not at that, that last that long yet. Um, and I and have all the all the, uh, the the confidence in the world that they will finish a, a good product and that they're willing to work together with people that can give them the feedback that is necessary to create a good and amazing game. Um, the promise, I believe, is for summer 2023. This is about a year and a half from now, which is realistic, I guess. A lot of work is still needed. Uh, but, you know, once once things are funded, usually development goes in full swing and we're going to see a lot of stuff happening. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm confident this will, uh, will become a good game. I have, I have full confidence, but it's going to need work. It's going to need a lot of Q&A. It's going to be a lot of playtesting. It's going to need some rebalancing and... As with games with numbers, some of this stuff might only happen after um, the public's got their hands on it. So during alpha, it's really difficult to balance it with a very limited pool. Same with beta, but you know, that's always stuff. But then these are numbers. Numbers can be tweaked. But if the core gameplay loop with good testing, good Q&A can get to a place that is, yeah, that's that's there. And I think they can do it. I have all the confidence in there. And I think the, 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 the groundwork for it is already present. Um, this thing's gonna be amazing, and I, I want to play more. I think that's a good sign. I, I like what I see, and I want to play more. And uh, yeah, just with some minor adjustments here and there, some minor, some uh, tough love. What is it? TLC, tough love and care, touch love and care. I don't fucking care what it is. We can get an amazing game. So uh, yeah, yeah. With that said, I uh, want to wish the developers all the luck in the world with their Kickstarter and the continued development. Um, and I hopefully can get some more info about the game up soon. Um, should be in about nearing uh, the end of December when the 
about the state of the Kickstarter. So with that said, I want to thank everybody for watching. See you hopefully the next one. Play the demo that is now out on Steam. Link to it in the description as well as in a pinned comment as well as a link to the Kickstarter. Go check it out. If you like what you see here or in the demo or on the Kickstarter page, back them. You can back them for a couple of bucks. It's uh, I think the lowest pledge you can do is, is, is one buck. Right, it's just one dollar, one euro towards them. Just, just you know, to show share of faith. Uh, there's a lot of stretch goals still to be done. Uh, we have a time of recording this. Ooh, let me scroll up real quick. We have still 22 days to go. So by the time you watch this, is uh, hopefully still up. Uh, it is currently the 25th of November. Just to clarify. So go to the either the Steam page or the Kickstarter page or both and check it out. I genuinely recommend it uh, doing so. And uh, hopefully see you the next one. Have a very good day. Bye bye.